Okay, I have two four by six white papers. This is just student drawing paper. You could do one nine by 12. I'm doing two because I'm gonna do warm colors, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, orange, and then blue, purple, pink on the other one. A white crown for the resist, any watercolors, and then some, um, if you don't wanna draw a heart or you want the hearts to be consistent, some kind of heart template to um, trace. Now, these are just from the Dollar Tree I have found. There's a foam um, and then a cardboard. If you want to draw one in cardboard, then cut it out. You could do that. Um, obviously, water and a paintbrush. We are going to do something called a crown resist. So you take your crown first and you're going to draw just squiggly lines, squiggly lines. Obviously, you won't see it. That's the cool part. It's like a magic trick. Do this on both or your one paper. And it has to be white. You could do a light pink. You would be able to see the lines, but you could do it. Okay, once you've done that, move that off to the side. Um, again, I'm going to do warm. Warm colors are your red, your yellow, your pink, your orange. Those are all your warm colors. So I'm going to do that on one paper, and then I'm going to do my blue, my cools, my blue, purple, green on the other one. Here's the magic. Get a wet brush. Your paintbrush always has to be wet. Again, I'm going to start with my reds. And I'm going to do different shades. I'm going to switch brushes. This flat brush is too big. I'm going to go with my round. Crayola paint works just as well. This is just the paint that I had on hand. An orange. And the reason I like to stick with your cools or your warms is that it won't, it'll, it'll stay those colors or it'll make a nice color. It won't make mud. And I'm just sporadically moving the paint around trying to, so I can still see all the colors. And you could let this dry for a little bit and then add more colors on top. Doesn't take long. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the side. There's my warm colors and my white crown. You can't see as much, I don't know why. Maybe I didn't push as hard. Okay, now I'm gonna do blues and purples. I'm just kind of switching with those three colors. Notice every time I go to my next color, I make sure I wash off my brush. You always want to get the last color off before you move to the next one. Ooh. 
Okay, clean my brush off. So I've done both warm and cool. These two layers are going to dry before we move to the next step. So if you can let them sit in the sun, that dries faster. I would not use a blow dryer just because it would move the paint and the water around. Okay, now I have a um, 9 by 12 This is mixed media. You want a thicker paper. It doesn't have to be, but to glue these on, it's going to be a little bit thicker. Then your two papers you painted, scissors, pencil, and some type of glue. Okay, so I always tell my kids at school, we never want to trace on the side with paint because if you mess up and you try to erase it, it ruins the pretty side. So you always want to flip it over and trace it this side. Now, I'm not going to use my stencils because my stencils are way too big. I want a smaller one, but I have a trick to make sure that my hearts um, are somewhat the same. So I'm just going to draw a heart as best as I can. And you want to get, I don't know, at least nine hearts or maybe 12. Okay, so I've drawn that. So what I'm going to do is take both papers, put them together, fold them. Yes, it's going to be quite a bit of paper to cut through, but it saves me some time. And you want to make sure you're not on the fold or they're going to end up being um, connected. And I like the hand cut look. So I don't mind if it's a little wobbly or wonky, especially if your children are doing this, then, you know, it's always a good thing to look back and see where they were, where they've come from, as in their motor skills and the artistic ability. Okay. So that's all trash and then I'm going to get my paper and you can figure out if you want it um, horizontal or vertical and it's kind of just plain with where you want the heart. So I'm kind of laying them out to see what colors I created. I don't want to do, you could do all your war, your cool colors if you wanted to. And if you have six, I would be two and two. I think that looks really cool if you framed it. Or maybe all your warm. I'm going to kind of do a mixture. Because I have enough, I'm going to do three. On there. Okay, I need to move them up. I always like to place them first before I glue. Okay. So, glue is one thing. I also always sometimes have um, sticky tape that is like a little bit of a cushion. So it kind of makes the heart looks like it's um, sticking off the paper. I don't think I have any today, but... That is another option for you to use. I'm just going to use the good old glue stick. So I take it, get some glue on the back, and glue it down. And if you have blobs of paint, don't worry, or glue. Um, and if it's if you see the purple, it'll dry clear. So another thing, if you feel like some of them are popping up, you could lay a big book on top to get that to stick down. Um, and again, the last thing, do not forget to have your artist sign the bottom of their art. Maybe give it a title. All right, I hope you enjoyed creating the watercolor resistant heart art 